Good morning, dear students. Here we continue part three of congenital craniofacial anomalies. I'm Professor Amro Abrook, Professor of Plastic and Maxillofacial Surgery. The intended learning outcomes by the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the embryology of the craniofacial region, understand cleft lip and palate pathogenesis and management, enumerate other craniofacial anomalies. Here's the columella, here's the filtral colon, here's the cubit's bow, here's the vermilion roll, and here's the wet vermilion, and here's the dry vermilion. Classification, it may be unilateral or bilateral, complete or incomplete, cleft lip, cleft palate, complete or incomplete, isolated syndromic. Here's a case again of complete and incomplete cleft lip. Where here is in incomplete, we have got similar band. Where here we have got complete cleft lip, as shown by the arrow, and cleft alveolus and gingiva as well. Cleft of the anterior palate, primary palate up to the incisive foramen and severe nasal deformity. Here's a case of incomplete cleft lip with milder nasal deformity, may have a notch in the alveolus, similar to band, incomplete cleft lip. Here's a diagram showing the cleft pellet and how its primary palate up to the incisive foramen and the secondary palate far below up to the uvula. And here's a diagram and a photo showing the vomer bone. In cases of bilateral cleft lip, prolabium is extruded as well with the premaxilla. We have got absent columella, palatal shelf, vomer bone, premaxilla, prolabium, collapse of the lateral segment due to cheek pressure, diagram showing incomplete cleft palate, unilateral complete cleft lip and palate, complete cleft palate, and bilateral complete cleft lip and palate. In the bilateral complete cleft lip and palate, there is collapse of both lateral segments of the palate due to cheek pressure. The premaxilla is unable to move into its right position, what's called premaxillary lockout. The embryology, it's very important to note that it's the first six weeks of gestation of human until the 13th summit stage. It shows embryology as well. The spur per clefting occurs because of failure of the fusion of the medial nasal process and the maxillary process. Karstet and Walter clefting occurs because of failure of the rhombomere R2 to migrate. This better explains the clinical observation that most severe deficiency is in the lateral nasal area. This is a proposed migration path. The rhombar process migrates towards the free margin of the lip and gingiva before continuing cephalate towards the lateral nose. Here is to show that gene activation during differentiation of migration take place. Here as well shows that different signal factors and target genes have got a role in the neural crest and cranial plateau development, the facial process and branchial arch development and skeletal development.
Here is a 12 diagram showing the genetics of the development of the fetus in different stages and different weeks. For cleft palate, for treatment, the priority is to restore the levator villi palati muscle sling. Here is the photo showing preoperative and postoperative case of cleft palate pre repair and after repair. For cleft palate, we have got a technique of further double opposing Z plus T for the repair as shown in the figure. It's double opposing Z results in a longer palate. The treatment sequence of complete cleft lip and palate first get the segments in alignment by pre-surgical orthodontics, then perform lip and gingiva repair. Typically, this occurs during the first month of life, three months. Palate repair in a separate stage, typically before the age of one year. The levator muscle should be ready and mobile, free of scarring for the phase of speech acquisition by the age of 15 to 18 month. The surgical aims in cleft lip repair, reposition of the ala, restore of the nasal floor, lengthen the columella on cleft side, lengthen medial lip segment, typically lateral lip segment has enough length, reconstitute symmetrical vermilion roll, Restore dry vermilion medially. Typically, lateral segment has enough dry vermilion. Align wet vermilion to dry vermilion line, wet to dry. Realign and correct abnormal insertion of orbicularis aurus muscle. Reconstitute filtral column, typically by placing the scar at the filtral column site. As shown in the figure, how we our aims are done. We have got Millard and Tennyson techniques for restoration and repair of cleft lip. For cleft palate repair, we have got Van Langenberg with intravilla veloplasty with a linear skull with muscle alignment, two flap palatoplasty. Ferlo double opposing Z plus T. Secondary deformities with velopharyngeal incompetence. We do sphincter pharyngeoplasty technique. And here we do a pharyngeal flap. The lateral incisor absent in 70% of cases during dental eruption. The canine tooth is absent or abnormal in 15% of cases. The canine tooth can be successfully erupted through cleft once the cleft alveolus is bone grafted, implants and orthodontics. The growth of the maxilla and mandible. Higher prevalence of class 3 malocclusion, maxillary retrognathia, the maxilla is underdeveloped due to surgical and or congenital etiology. Growth restriction highly correlated with surgical technique. Scarring, incisions, and denuded bone can be corrected by maxillary advancement, either Lefort 1 or Lefort 3. Here is the case of cleft lip, a complete one, preoperative and post-operative after repair. Long-term results. Craniofacial malformations. Craniofacial malformations include craniosynostosis, craniostenosis syndromes, mandibulofacial dysostosis, hemifacial microsomia, and oculo-auriculo-vertebral syndrome. Craniosynostosis, premature closure of sutures. 
its premature closure of cranial sutures, primary cranial synestosis due to abnormalities of skull development, secondary cranial synestosis due to failure of brain drop and expansion which produces microcephaly. For most workers, cranial synestosis equals primary cranial synestosis. Its incidence it's one in every 2,000 to 3,000, much more common in males. The mechanism is unknown, but perhaps cranial base abnormalities cause dura forces that disrupt normal suture development. Defects of the frontonasal prominence one. It's excessive tissue in the frontonasal prominence, frontonasal dysplasia, broad nasal bridge, hypertellurism, cleft nose, median cleft lip can be associated with other defects. Example, teratology of fallot. Here's some photos showing patients having got chronofacial defects. Soft facial clefts, it ranges from zero up to 14 as shown in the photo. And here are some bony clefts of the face, also from 0 to 14. It's either the sagittal, resulting in scaphocephaly, boat like shaped, unicoronal, placed euphcephaly, twisted shape, bicoronal, brachycephaly, short shape, and metopic, trigonocephaly, keel shaped skull. Most common is the sagittal and biggest differential is the deformational plagiocephaly or positional plagiocephaly, non-synostotic. The trigonocephaly as shown in the diagram. The scaphocephaly as shown by three-dimensional 3D and photography of the patient. three-dimensional CT and skull bone and photography of the patient. Cranisonostotic syndromes associated with mid face abnormalities, base or skull synchondrosis associated with finger toe malformation, other diagnostic, other associated malformations. Major craniosynostotic syndromes, we have got the cruzon with normal hand, Appert syndrome, major syndactly, Pfeiffer syndrome with broad thumbs, and Munich syndrome with fur genetic based diagnosis. Of the gene in the mutation, predictably causing bicoronal or unicoronal synostosis. And here's some photos of patients with craniosynostosis pre and post. Here is a photo of other patients showing patients with different types of craniosynestosis and associated with hand syndromes as well. And here's case of Pfeiffer syndrome showing her hands, her eyes. Mandibulofacial dysostosis, Fletcher Collins syndrome, Neger syndrome. It's an autosomal dominant with variable expression. The zygomatic arch, the masseter, the mandible, side of mouth are variably affected. In summary, we should know by the end the commonest and management of the commonest of these syndromes.